Hey guys, Rob here with Spirit and Truth, and I just want to take a minute to explain how we got our name, Spirit and Truth. When we were planning this church, God woke me up in the middle of the night, and he took me to John 4, 23, the woman at the well. And I was astounded how Jesus talked with this woman and revealed himself as the Messiah. He explained to her how in order to have a right relationship with God, she needed to actually have a relationship with him. And this woman who was in shame because of her past and had baggage and sin like all of us, used all of these different religious excuses as to how he couldn't be the way to God. She brought up tradition. She brought up ethnicity. She brought up buildings. She brought up location. She brought up denomination. She brought up tradition. All the things that get in the way of just having a pure relationship with God. And Jesus answered it so eloquently when he said, I'm not looking for any of that. I'm looking for a whole new way of being, a whole new way of relating to God. And, and this is how he said it. The true worshipers will come and they will worship me in spirit and in truth. That this new way of relating to God that Jesus was bringing about in the earth was not about all of those other things. It was about knowing God in your inmost being, your spirit, connecting with God, communing to God, talking to God, relating to God, and knowing his revealed will for your life. That's the truth. Knowing ultimate reality, that which aligns with reality, not being in denial of things, but facing them as they are, embracing the truth so that it can set you free. And so at Spirit and Truth, we want to be walking in the Spirit of God who can equip us and empower us and convict us and comfort us. But we also want the truth of God, which we find in the 66 books of the scriptures, that the canonized Bible the Christian Bible is worth defending, it's worth living, and it reveals God's will for our life. At Spirit and Truth, we want to be a church that brings charismatics and conservatives together. And so may we be a church that walks in the power of the Holy Spirit and all of the charismatic gifts that embraces dreams, visions, signs, and wonders, and a church that practices sound doctrine, that is, willing to defend the beliefs of the faith, even the ones that might not be so popular today. May we be a church that unifies those that walk in the spirit and the charismatic expression and those that walk in the truth and the more conservative biblical expression. May we be a church that walks in spirit and truth.